Hey guys, it's Chris at Highland Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of the video, I'll have earned your subscription. And to everyone who's watching, if you enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you really, really like my videos and would like to help support the channel financially, you can visit eGuitarPlants.com. There's a link in the description below or you can visit the Highline Guitars merch store, which is displayed below the description for this video. And on either of those two locations, you can make purchases, which will help support the channel, plus you'll be getting something in return. You can also click the thanks button down below and leave a tip in the amount that you would like. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to pick up where I left off in part two of my electric violin build. And in that video, I finished up by saying I had some decisions to make about the design of the instrument. And I also, in part two, had kind of laid out my CNC strategy, which in truth is kind of evolving as I plan this build out. So uh, this is really a, a very new project for me, something that's completely different than anything else I've done before. <laughs> So I'm kind of learning as I go along and as I do some research. But what I want to talk about specifically in this episode is some of the materials that I'm going to use to make this violin. And I'll share with you some of the updates to my CNC strategy uh, as I prepare to start carving this uh, instrument on my Inventables X-Carve Pro CNC machine. So let me bring you in closer and we'll get started. Okay, before I jump in and explain some of the materials that I'm gonna be using for this instrument, I think it's really important that I reiterate the goal for this project. And the reason I feel I need to do that is because in reading the comments that folks have left on the first two parts in the series, it's clear that some people don't fully understand what it is I'm trying to do, and others have, I think, a preconceived notion of what they think I should be doing. In both cases, they're wrong. Um, I am not planning to use this project as a prototype, which I intend to perfect prior to going into production. Instead, this is just a fun project that I'm doing for myself. I don't plan to sell uh, versions of this violin to anybody else at least at this moment. Now, who knows? If there was enough interest, I might consider doing that. But um, I have a sneaking suspicion that's not gonna be the case. I'm doing this just for fun for myself. And to that end, my goal isn't to make an amplified version of a Stradivari or um, Gnari violin. Instead, I just wanna put this thing together and see what happens and see what kind of sound I get out of it. So I'm not using existing acoustic violins as a benchmark, nor am I using existing electric violins as a benchmark. I'm trying to create my own tone. And that's sort of the philosophy I have for building electric guitars. I'm not trying to mimic or reproduce what others have already done. I don't see any purpose in that. I'm always looking for ways to come up with some kind of new tone or sound something like, um, you know, that, that hasn't uh, been done before or isn't as common. And I know that with this violin, because of the way I've designed it, it's probably not gonna sound the same as what other electric violins or acoustic violins sound like. So we have to break that expectation right here and now. Uh, I've had viewers who have commented that because I'm thinking about using these, um, these are just precision bass pickups and I'm going to wire them together in series as a kind of a humbucker to um, electrically amplify this instrument. But a lot of folks have said it's not going to work because the way the string on a violin vibrates, this type of pickup doesn't necessarily pick up those vibrations all that well. But in my research, I have found that that's not necessarily true. It has to do a lot with the type and composition of the strings that are gonna be used on the violin. So it is possible. It just may not be what you expect when you hear it. Also, uh, think about it this way. If, if it didn't work at all, then 
why is it every time Jimmy Page puts a bow on his Les Paul, we can hear it? It does work. It just is going to take some, um, some thought and planning with respect to the design and the type of strings that are going to be used to create the sound that I'm hoping to achieve. Now, when I say hoping to achieve, it's important to note, I have no real preconceived notion of what this violin is gonna sound like. It's just gonna sound like whatever it sounds like when it's done. The beauty of it is, because I'm not gonna permanently mount these pickups, if in the end I don't like the way it sounds, I can change it. So if I decide after trying these pickups that it's not producing what I was hoping for or something that satisfies my own uh, interest and, and desire needs, I can go ahead and use like a piezo uh, style pickup. And there are a number of different kinds of piezo pickups out there for violins. There are um, uh, pickups which attach directly to the bridge as well as pickups that attach underneath the bridge. Just a, a number of different solutions. I can do any one of them that I want to since I'm not permanently mounting these pickups. Okay, so with that said, let's start to take a look at the wood that I'm going to use for this build. Okay, so I'm going to start out in the order that I'm going to make this violin. So the first part that I'm going to make is going to be the fingerboard. And I'm going to be using this nice beautiful piece of Paduke. And this is actually quite a bit longer than it needs to be for a violin fingerboard. So I will be able to cut out the best section of this board to make it. And violin fingerboards are, um, they have to be cut from a fairly thick piece of wood. You know, normally with an electric guitar, we're talking about a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch. And, um, with a violin fingerboard, we're talking close to five eighths of an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch, because the radius of the fingerboard is, um, it's about one and three quarter inches radius, like 42 millimeters, I think that is. So it's really rounded, and therefore it needs to be cut from a fairly thick piece of wood. And I really like Paduke because it can be sanded and polished uh, extremely smooth and doesn't necessarily need any sort of a finish. Although to really enhance its appearance, I'll probably put a polymerized tongue oil finish on it, which will darken the wood slightly and make it look really nice. So that's, uh, at least for the moment, what I'll be using for the fingerboard, you know, and in case there's a problem during the CNC process, if this wood is rendered useless, I'll have to look for something else that I have in stock that I can use. Um, this is basically just some scrap Paduke that I've had in my, in my uh, wood stash. In fact, all the wood, well, actually the wood for the body and the neck, or for the neck and the fretboard is wood that I had uh, in my stash. The body, on the other hand, I had to purchase that and I'll show that in a minute. But this is the blank that I'm going to be using for the neck itself. And again, it's a bit longer than it needs to be. And obviously it's quite a bit wider. But as I explained in last week's video, uh, part two, I'm going to be carving the neck in two halves out of this one piece of wood. And then once those two halves have been carved, I can cut the tabs, liberate the two halves, and then glue them together, sort of like a laminated neck. Now, one modification to my CNC strategy that I made uh, after I posted part two is that I am going to do a carving operation on the other side, which is going to hollow out the scroll because that scroll is fairly wide. And if I were to leave it solid, that uh, neck and headstock in particular is going to be really heavy, especially once I put the tuners on. So the instrument would suffer from uh, potential neck dive. Although with violins, you can buy special um, chest supports which hold the violin straight out 
without any, you know, without having to hold it. So um, weight is still somewhat of an issue, but it's not going to be a super critical issue. Now, this piece of wood is flat sawn if you look at the grain. However, uh, once I cut out those two halves and glue them together, it becomes pseudo quarter sawn, even though it's not true quarter sawn, the grain will be running up and down. So that will enhance its strength and stiffness. I'm not too concerned about that in truth because um, the violin's scale length is only 13 inches. So the neck is really short. It's not very long at all. So I don't really, and it's only four strings. So I'm not that concerned with uh, strength and stability and resistance to warpage or anything like that because when coupled with the Paduk fretboard that I've, I think that that neck is going to be pretty stiff and, and strong now for the body I had to go out and purchase a piece of wood because originally I was planning to use alder and I had a couple of pieces of alder but they were so damaged with so many cracks and knots that I couldn't use it so I went to my local lumber supplier, which here in Denver is a business called Austin Hardwoods. So if you're local, uh, I highly recommend that you visit Austin Hardwoods uh, to check out their selection. The prices are great. The selection is always great. The wood is super dry and ready to use. And I've just always had great luck with them. So what I have here is a nice thick slab of African mahogany. And it is pretty much, it's close to a, I can't really tell here from the saw marks. It's, it's flat sawn. So, but I have a nice ribbon striping pattern in the surface. Uh, we'll see it better once it's been planed. But what I'll have to do is plane this down to be thinner. Actually, what I'll probably do is run it through my bandsaw and slice off a slab, then plane it, because I have to remove quite a bit. This is eight quarter, and I think I need it to be closer to five quarter um, in thickness, about one and five eighths inch, or yeah, it's about one and five eighths inches thick is what I think the, uh, the body blank has to be before I start to carve it on the CNC machine. But the plan for this, is I'm going to start out by cutting the neck pocket at this end. Then right behind it is going to be the uh, cavity, the carving, uh, carved out cavity for the inside of the bottom half of the, of the body. Then at this end, I'm going to carve out the inner cavity for the top half of the body. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to show you some graphics here that, that kind of indicate how that's going to work. But then once that carving operation is done, and of course this is all done on the CNC machine, I'll flip the blank over, get everything realigned, clamp it down, and then I'll cut the other side, which is going to involve uh, cutting at this end will be the back of the bottom with the contour, and at this end is the, uh, the top, the contour on the top half. Then I will cut the perimeter shape with the tabs and that will complete the carving of the body. Then I just have to cut the tabs to liberate the two pieces so that I can glue them together. Now a viewer did mention something that I thought was intriguing. He said what I ought to do is make it so that the halves are screwed together or that at least the back could be screwed on that way. If I wanted to mount the electronics into the body, I could unscrew the back to do any sort of service work. And that made a lot of sense to me. And I think that's something I would consider if I was going to put this violin into production and was going to be using internally mounted uh, components, electrical components. But with this violin, I don't intend to do that. I'm gonna put everything on the outside of the violin. That way I can experiment with different kinds of pickups and, and uh, different electronics and I don't have to have it mounted inside the violin. It'll also, I think, keep the weight down because some of the controls like volume and tone and stuff like that, I can do as a separate preamp that I plug the uh, violin into. And it doesn't have to be on the violin at all. So um, that's kind of uh, my thought for that. So um, 
That's basically all the wood that I will be using. Uh, there will, of course, be a little piece of wood for the bridge, but I haven't purchased that yet. That's probably going to come ready-made. I don't see a point in, in cutting my own bridge since they're readily available and they're super, super cheap. Um, you know, that's one of those things where if down the road I decided that I could do a better job, then I might consider doing it. But um, in doing my research, I found bridges that are uh, pretty decent quality. Although what I could do, since this Paduk uh, fingerboard is going to be, the blank is much longer than it needs to be, I could make a bridge from a section of this. So I might think about doing that. That might be pretty cool. I would have the Paduk fingerboard and then a Paduk bridge. So that's a possibility. If it were longer, I could even do a tailpiece out of the Paduk. So, hmm, got some things to think about. This is, this is definitely a project that will evolve as each uh, uh, episode is posted. So I encourage you to keep checking back and learn how this project evolves. And hopefully at the end, I'll have a finished violin that actually works and sounds good and is fun to play and looks cool. We'll see. Um, you just never know. All right, guys. Well, that's all the time I have for this episode. Hopefully in episode four, I will start to cut out the parts for this instrument on my CNC machine. But, you know, as I was finishing up this episode and was talking about how I could use this piece of Paduk to make a tailpiece and a bridge, it occurred to me that it's really not long enough to do a fingerboard, a tailpiece, and a bridge all from this one piece. So I started looking through my stash of wood and I came across this really nice slab of bird's eye maple. So it occurred to me I could use this to make a tailpiece as well as a bridge, use the paduk for the fingerboard, and this would look like a really cool instrument with some gorgeous wood involved. So I've got to do a little bit of uh, additional planning. And if I do decide to use this for the tailpiece and the bridge, I'm going to have to create the models for those in order to generate the G-code for cutting those parts and, and carving them out of this wood. So... Uh, I don't think that's a bit, uh, you know, a huge task that will be involved, um, but we'll see. And hopefully I can get this done and get, get cutting soon because I'm really anxious to get started on building this instrument. I think once all the parts are ca uh, cut out, it's not going to take that long to assemble it. So uh, at any rate, I hope you're enjoying this series as much as I'm enjoying planning it and filming it for you. And um, if you do, please at least give it a thumbs up. Um, you know, and the other uh, methods of supporting my channel that I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this video. Uh, at any rate, I hope that uh, you'll uh, take care, stay safe, and you'll come back for the future episodes in this interesting little project.